resume reader, Crow Song, and today I will be reading to you from Handcuffs by Raccoon Mania. Now, on to chapter 9. Upon arrival at the Russian's home, Russia opened the door, having already unlocked the door. Inside, it was dark as hell, so South Korea reached out a hand and turned on a light. Now, Russia led the two countries, America sticking close to Russia. This time, it was South Korea's turn to gape at the inside of the Russian's house. Not many went into the Slav's home, unless it was for a business meeting or such. So, in short, South Korea had only gone inside Russia's house once before, but that was a very long time ago. So, yeah. The Korean was quite curious. After all, only countries who voluntarily came here other than Russia and a few of his siblings were Japan, China, North Korea occasionally, Vietnam came over, and a few others. And finally, there was India, who mainly on very special occasions, or more commonly, for discussions and matters concerning their relations, military, political, economic, and otherwise. Now that the useless filler is over, I'll get back to the story. Anyways, Russia was walking down a hallway when he walked besides a closet. Japan. I waited in the closet awaiting Russia, America, and my lovely South Korea. I heard their footsteps and had to put my hand over my mouth to stop my giggles from being heard. Three, two, oh shit! <laughs> I suddenly jumped out of the closet. Well, shit, I failed my prank. I looked at South Korea, who appeared to slightly jump. Oh, I, maybe I didn't fail completely. Third person. As Japan burst out of the closet, South Korea did a little jump in the air. Russia remained unfazed, and I would be quite the liar if I said America didn't burst out laughing after he, too, jumped. Russia moaned in despair, already predicting that having allowed Japan to be invited was a mistake. But, unless nobody knows how to turn back time without a device that doesn't require a material to go through the quantum realm, or won't require a hot tub, a vengeful cyborg man with a teddy bear, a flying car, or superpowers, do tell! With a heavy sigh, Russia shifted, put America in a position that would allow the Russian to carry the American in, in a more comfortable manner, and the four walked off, South Korea and Japan holding each other's hands, Japan <laughs> tugging the Korean along. After about three hours of work, Russia finally gave up and joined in with the silly antics of the three countries. Japan grinned at Russia, who finally agreed to join their games. What is the game, Japonia? Russia tiredly questioned. The English for that is Japan. Japan smiled and opened her mouth to speak. Suddenly, South Korea lurched forwards and kissed Japan as she was about to say, We! Oui. Once South Korea leaned back, heavy blush coating his face, Japan imitating him. Oh, I forgot about that, dare, she whispered. Russia looked at America, who was having the time of his life, laughing at the two Asian countries. Southie here was dared to, 
and kissed Japan if she spoke. <laughs> America squealed, tears leaking from his eyes. Russia frowned. Truth or dare? America nodded, confirming Russia's suspicions that that was the game being played. Russia, you just joined, so you'll be the first dared. Honestly, Russia had no idea how the other countries, who were now sitting in a circle on the floor of his living room, had gotten here. Because now, not only was Russia, America, Japan, and South Korea in his home, but there was also a rather red-faced island and a smug-faced Scotland. Ireland and Scotland both wore the same clothes from their run-in with Russia and America, only now their clothes were all messy and ruffled and slightly covered with dirt. And a few other hints that demonstrated the two's most recent activities, but hush. And finally, there was also Germany, who had a lot of fun with driving on the almost completely empty roads. He legit drove above the speed limit whenever he got the chance. And then you had Poland, who was still quite shook from the car ride with Germany. They had wanted to invite Jamaica so that they could be smoking the reefer, but at that point, Russia had put his foot down and said no more countries could come over. And then you had Georgia, who was clearly confused as fuck, come upstairs. Stalin had items poking from their bag. And almost immediately, Armenia, with a sadistic grin, broke a window out of the living room, screaming, Distraction, allowing the Georgian to escape with stolen goods. The Armenian soon followed suit. Eventually, it was decided that America and Russia being handcuffed together was quite boring, so somebody left and got a spare handcuffs key and uncuffed the two. With a click, the handcuffs fell to the floor. Russia instantly grabbed the shackles, got up, and ran to put them on the highest shelf of an armory. America did nothing to protest. He then ran for the bathroom and took a quick shower. During the time the others had looked at Russia, see, they all knew why he had been handcuffed to America. You will have to put those back on, you realize, the Scotsman stated. Russia nodded and went to his room to change. Once the two had come back, the games continued. And that's the end of this chapter. I hope you've enjoyed. Anyway, I'd like to invite you to join the Discord, which is linked down in the description. And that's all I have. I will see you at some point tomorrow also. I hope you have a nice day, night, or whatever it is for you. Just enjoy your time and see you tomorrow.